So my question is, when when you face d4, what do you normally do with black? So I used to always do only um, one, uh, one, yeah, two c take d take c4. But mm -hmm. um, lately, I started adding Nimzo, Bogo, and Ragazin. Mm -hmm. Uh, not. Queen's, in, Queen's Indian. Indian. Queen's Indian, not Queen's Indian, but right. um, Ragozin, was it Bogolubov? I don't know. And um, and yeah, I'm confusing. But uh, basically, e6, knight of 6, bishop b4, like this. Uh huh, yeah. No, I understand. Okay. Um, and uh, I started second. kind of learning some variations of Queen's Gambit declined. Like, for example, instead of knight f6, bishop e7. Mm -hmm. That one, for example. So uh, some of the positions that you showed me that I said, for example, I had with uh, Alex Fishman. Fishbein. And, yes, exactly that one. Mm -hmm. And he um, played me rook c1. He, he, I played h6, he played bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and rook c1. Mm -hmm. And how did that game end? Uh, I lost, but I was I, I wasn't doing bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or do you not like the Queen's Gambit accept anymore? Or you just want to play more stuff. I mean, I played Queen's Gambit accept for all my professional chess career, like which was uh, about at least ten years I played it. So uh, I just like, and I still I don't know. I just felt like always the positions were for two results, like mm -hmm. whenever I save it or I lose. And every single advisor, so to be, uh, who I worked with would tell me stop playing that shit. Yeah, but Queen's Gambit accepted is okay. Maybe I wasn't playing the right lines. Then, yeah, I wouldn't... Because I would never, for example, play with Bishop G4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's okay. Sounds like you were playing it fine. Um, so um, I don't know. I have so many games that I've been. I would be like, and it was also easy to prepare for me because everybody mm -hmm. knew like when I only had this one opening. It's so easy to prepare that it's like on move number seven in the classical position. White has such a big choice, like doing whatever. Mm -hmm. and they would always surprise me. Okay. Um, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe my my like my issue is not actually like what I play in general, but how. I prepare for the particular game because if I manage to come up not being as like, like easy to 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 be prepared for. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It's good to ex expand your opening repertoire. Karen's not going to be with us today. She's not feeling well, so we can have a longer lesson if you have time. Oh, amazing! Why did Karen abandon us, though? No, she's not feeling well. I'm not feeling great either, but she's feeling much worse than me. Okay, so, so you're gonna feel worse tomorrow. Maybe I have like muscle aches, but she has like feeling bad. Like what so she has is virus. worse. What she has is worse. Yeah, well, you're gonna have it tomorrow. Don't worry. Yay! That's what marriage is all about. Yeah, it's like it doesn't mean like I, I, I was sick like a couple of weeks ago. I think everybody's now sick. I'm sure it's some variation of COVID. So yeah, you, you, you like, you don't have like throat ache. No. Okay. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. No, I don't get COVID. Nobody in my family gets COVID. Karen's family gets uh, COVID. So Karen is not your family. No, I mean, I'm on the fine gold side of the family. My brother, my son, my mom. My daughter, none of us got COVID ever. Everybody on Karen's side of the family, they all got COVID. I see. So you have some cells that are anti-COVID. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Some, some something, like yeah. They, maybe chess, chess master blood. Mm -hmm. you said everybody's a master in your family. That's right. Exactly. Uh, okay. So let's let's start with the get second game with Van der Steren. And then I guess if you click on the games tab, you won't see the... You won't see the engine. Mm, all right. Let me you can also that. turn off the engine, but you have to click something. So. Uh, yeah, I don't have it. I have. Uh, wait, is it? Uh, wait, I'm in the games. 
I'm in with Kaidan of Gaelic. Oh, you haven't or... you you haven't accepted my invitation, it says. Oh, I'm in the old study, okay. Yeah, you're in the old one. Yeah, I invited okay. you in the classroom, but you didn't accept. Yes, I because it's, I'm so sorry, I was focused here, I have it. Now you accepted. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, Van I'll... der Steren, Paul. Mm-hmm. Your favorite Dutchman. Nice, my favorite Dutchman. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this game was played in 1989, so you weren't born yet. Uh, yes, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it might even be true. It's possible. It, it is very possible. It is, mm -hmm. it is very possible and it makes me feel so good. Yeah, okay. So I had White and he played the QGA like you do. Oh, that's why you were asking. And, and, then, and then I played a different move on move seven. So this is move seven. I've actually yeah. played, I, I've played bishop d3, which is what I played, and I've also played a4. Those are the two moves I've played. Okay. I know you can take on c5, but yeah, don't do that. You could, people are playing b3 now too. But, okay, so bishop d3, and then he traded on d4. Now, typically, when I was a child, although maybe I was a child during this game. I, I was 20 in this game, so I don't consider myself a child. When I was a child, uh, between like ages 5 and 15, I thought if you had an isolated pawn, that was bad. Then, then in my 20s, I realized it wasn't bad. And then in my 30s, I decided I preferred it. So I actually like having isolated pawn because I have more more space and more activity. Like my bishop can get out, my pawn's not on e3, unlike this bishop. And my pawn controls squares in the black territory, so the knights can go there. And it's just easier, I think, for white to play than for black to play like knight d5 and trade all the pieces and get a better endgame, which is also drawn, so... But I like right. I play I play both sides of isolated pawn positions. I just like having it more now. That's just my personal preference. Hey, thanks C. Esposito for for one dollar. Yay. Um, I think I I like I used to like I used to be. I think I I hate it for both because <laughs> for uh, black it's kind of little bit dangerous. You have to watch out for your king mm -hmm. and the attacks and passive and for white. It's kind of like uh, it's a lot of responsibility because if you do something too slow, then they're gonna trade pieces and they're gonna be better end game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the reasons why it was tough for me to play Queen's Gambit Accepted is because I always try to avoid isolated pawns because I hated them, and mm -hmm. um, and I think in the chess in the database, like the, that's a move number seven. Is like maybe at least fifty games with black here for me mm -hmm. throughout the years. Well, it's good to play something new, but now you can have white, so yeah. this will be a new thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he played bishop e seven. So when this game was played, I was a fide master and he was a grandmaster. Okay, so his title was better than mine. Okay, but I was young and brash or something. Okay, I played young and brash. Yeah, I played bishop g5, which probably isn't the main move. But I got my pieces out, so that's good. And then I played okay. a3. So the engine says black is doing fine. And then he played knight d5, which I think probably isn't the best move. Because now I get to swing my queen over. So I played queen like, e4. Queen e4 yes. Yeah, and then after g6, I played queen h4. And then probably the opening isn't really important, but seeing the ideas is because I think we both played typical ideas and isolated queen pawn. And since I won, that's good because you're going to have white. Amazing. I don't know what Mepex is doing. He's putting games in the... 
I don't know what he's doing. Okay, anyway, Bpex is banned. Okay, so he played knight f6, and I played knight e4, and he traded. And now he broke a very important rule, which the engine also breaks. Mm, f6. Yeah, but this is funny. White to play is winning here. <laughs> White has is a big it? threat. It looks pretty innocuous, but White has a big threat. Thanks for the raid of one, Ryan. You're the best. Oh, you pasted her fish buying game? Yeah, I'm sure she's grateful for that. Thank you. Yes, I mean, we could take a look at that later on when we're going to consider that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what's White threatening? White is threatening... Uh... Uh, bum, bum, bum. Correct. Um, we take on e7 and we go knight g5. But they go h5, but it's weakening. And we can always maybe do something crazy later on, like g4 in general. Another possibility for threat. Oh, bishop d5. Oh my god, that's so easy. Bishop yeah. d5. I, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> Yeah, bishop d5 was the answer, but you found a better answer. Then you then you stopped giving a good answer. Bishop e, bishop e7 just wins a piece. Oh, bishop e7 yeah, because the bishop e7 yeah. is So bishop d5 wins a piece and bishop e7 wins a piece. Man, tough position. Correct. Man. Okay, my opponent played f6. Never play f6. Never. Yeah. Okay, so where would you what would you do in this position? Uh, um, we have several options. Option number one, we move the bishop. And let's go for Okay, if we go bishop h six, we have to calculate f five. And it's a little bit annoying. So I would probably consider going bishop like to c one. And if they go f5, we can go knight g5. Okay, that's that's take. that's exactly what I did. Okay. Okay, good. Bishop c1, and if f5, then knight g5, right. Okay, he played queen d7, which, you know, it's legal. It's okay. I played rook fe1, and he couldn't help himself, so he, he played f5. Okay. Okay. And I played the only move. I like to ask you those questions. Usually you get them right. So. Only move here. Now I have to warn you, I'm not good at chess now, but I used to be. So I used to, I used to make good moves. Like I make like 10, 10, 20 good moves in a row. Yes. Bishop, Bishop D5. Yeah. yeah. That's the only move. And that gives White the advantage. So f5 actually is a mistake. Yeah. Okay. And then we go bishop g5. He did take with the bishop. I didn't do any of that. But bishop g5 is fine. Yeah, I, I went to g3. But bishop g5 is fine. Nothing wrong with that. So now the engine okay. wants to play a move a grandmaster wouldn't like. Bishop takes knight. Whoa. That's more of an engine move than a grandmaster move. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, so he played bishop f6. I played bishop h6. He played rook e8. I played knight e5. And he played queen e7. Now it says I'm plus one. Okay. Um, this is a good position for you to find a plan for white. Well, usually my favorite is to push the h pawn. Right now we cannot because bishop will take. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I always I like sacrificing one in someone else's pieces. Mm -hmm. H four bishop h four. If we take, they take, we take. It's not a plan, we just threw the piece. Maybe we bring someone to to the party, like Rook, Rook H4, 
rook to d3, for example. Very good. Yeah, the engine says rook to d3 or rook to e3. It slightly prefers your move. I played rook to e3. Okay, that's understandable. You're not afraid of g5? Right. Uh, no, although that stuff happens later, so keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, he played king h8, which the engine doesn't like. And we go... We have to rearrange our pieces. The, re the reason rook d3 and rook e3 are good is you're flexible. You can go on the c file, you can double on the e file, or you can put your rook on the h file. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Right. The engine says my move is the best, because I used to be good. Um, your move is best. And another move is tied for first, so you got two choices. Let me see. Um, I kind of want to bring the rook to the attack, but I don't see right away. Oh, no. Is something like queen f4, and if g5, you take on g5, and then you go knight f7, but then they will always play rook g8 and take on g2. Uh, unless you go to the end game, like you take with the queen, queen takes, you go knight, like queen sack, knight f7, king g7, you go king knight g5, you're a pawn up, but you might think this is not enough for you. Yeah, the engine agrees with what you said. It says that's the third best, and it says that end game is 0.8 for white. Yeah, so it's not enough. You want more, which is understandable. You're, um, you deserve more. Um, I mean, is something like queen h3 seems awkward because there is g5, but maybe you can go queen h5. No. And then threaten knight f7 and threaten. What I did takes advantage of king h8. Okay, so I played oh, the move because... rook c3. Yeah, and, well, and the idea is that, I'm yeah. threatening rook c7. Okay. But I'm only threatening rook c7 because he played king h8. Got it. Thanks, drunk and such, for subscribing. Then you wrote a soliloquy. Yeah. Wow, that's a long thing you wrote. Yeah. But thanks for subbing. Thank you. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of arrows on the board. Is is your name Hikaru Nakamura? I am learning from the best. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, confusing the audience. Exactly. They okay. love it. They love being confused. Oh yeah, I know. So they played rook he played rook a c eight. I played the most so obvious rook move. C1. Uh huh. Okay. And he played a uh, mistake. Bishop B seven. So you go rook c7. Uh-huh. Okay, and when I, when I played rook c7, I saw the move he would play. Hmm. Mm. If you don't see this move, you'll be very surprised, and you'll be like, oh, my God. Uh, uh, g5. G5 is correct. And if rook takes c7, chat, we go rook c1, checkmate! Boom! Mm-hmm. Okay, I played the best move. When I show games I played in the 80s and 90s, I often say I played the best move. Why? I didn't do any of this. What is all this? Hold on. Right. Let me see. G5, bishop takes... Bishop g5. G5. Uh, bishop takes g5. Then what'd you do? Queen takes then rook c7 resigns. I haven't calculated till then. You're right, you're right. Okay, g5, let me, give me a second. Um, there is, there is something here. Okay. Wait, wait, I... Uh, I'm waiting. Uh, no rush, no rush. Hey, Dankle, how are you? Yeah. Mm. Okay, we can just play something like h5, h4. h4 is the second best move, also winning. f4. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see f4. f4, doesn't, doesn't f4 block my queen? It does. It's, I'm stupid, sorry. Um... 
Okay, now th this has nothing to do with D4, but I'm going to teach you some things that we didn't mean to teach you that are going to be very important for your chess. These, awesome. are, these are the moves that are the hardest to see. It's hard for you to see it for you, and it's hard to see it for your opponent. So when it's good, it's extra good because nobody ever sees them. Everybody sees knight g6 check because it's crazy. The moves that you can play that nobody sees are called retreating moves. Very good. Yeah, knight d3 is the best move because not only does it defend my rook, it defends my other rook. So now I'm threatening rook takes queen again. That makes sense. And I have a little fort going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now he's losing. Hooray. If he plays f4, which he didn't do, that's the second best. I Taking the queen, which is the only winning move. And take the bishop. Yeah. And then if he takes here, I can take the bishop and win, or I can take on c8 and win. Because he can't take with the bishop because it gets mated. So he has to take this and take this, and then he resigns. You're right. You're right. Uh, also, your line wins. Okay, yeah. so now he's losing. He played queen d8, and I went yum, yum, yum. I took the bishop. And he took on d4. And now I played the safest move, so the engine hates it. It says it's winning, but the engine doesn't play safe. The engine plays the engine move. It, if there's no mate on the back rank, it doesn't care if it's like you're scared of it. So I played like the most scaredy cat move ever because I'm up a piece, which I recommend. But the engine okay. plays like the most aggressive move, like Rook C7. Mm. Okay, that's that's the and then after F4, it like takes that and then it's okay. But anyway, I played Rook F1. Now I am the safest person oh, ever. God. Nobody's safer than me. Okay, agreed. F4. Queen H3. I figure I'll play Queen H7 mate if he lets me. Queen E4 attacking my rook. Right. Rook F7. Now he played G4. Okay. And I can take on G4, but I play Queen H5. It's just safer. Yes, so you're opening you the G line. Risks yeah. when you're winning. And then we traded pieces. Played rook d8. I played rook f7. I guess if I was a better player, I would have played rook f8 check and queen e5 check. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, but I played rook f7 threatening queen e5 check. Such a beauty, huh? And then queen takes g4, and then he resigned. Finally was about time exactly yeah well i never knew i could play rook f8 and queen e5 i learned something new every game mm -hmm. we couldn't yeah. analyze these games with engines because we didn't have engines yeah so when we won we thought we played well and we lost we thought we played bad so that <laughs> that was our analysis yeah but didn't you like post analyze your games after we did but everything we would say is wrong Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I saw that in many books. Okay, so that was your favorite Dutchman? Yeah, he's a really nice guy. And his, his wife, although when I say his wife, 1989, so who knows now. But his wife at the time, uh, she was 2200. She played a tough game against me once. Oh, wow. She was By the so way, in the, Nether in the Netherlands... When I was living in the Netherlands, when I was living in Belgium, I don't know if you know I lived in Belgium. I didn't know you lived in Europe. Yeah, I lived in Belgium from 1988 to 1992. Uh, when I lived there in the Netherlands, most of the top players were married to the top women players. That was common. Oh, that was like uh, Kasparov to that lady from Luxembourg. Yeah. Kasparov has had two or three Parent. wives. Yeah. Elmira, Elvira. Elvira. Yeah. Okay, so let's... Wow. Uh, I see you uh, follow the tradition. Even though you returned back to U.S., you still marry the chess woman. 
Mm hmm. Yeah, my first wife was American, but we moved to Europe and we got married in Europe. You wanted to escape from America? I escaped. No, she got a job Did offer, you? so then I went with her. Oh. This is before you were born, so you can't remember any of this stuff. Yeah, that makes me feel so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at another game, and this will give you some fish buying memories. No, it won't actually. <laughs> no. Okay, this fish game. Fun. This guy's about twenty one hundred. This was played in nineteen ninety three, when I was already pretty good. So yeah, we transposed. So so if you have the black pieces. <clears throat> would you always play bishop b4 here or would you play d5 sometimes and then after bishop g5 you could play bishop b4 uh, probably not because you want to play bishop e7 on move three i just got distracted by my chat or trolls can you please repeat the question yeah Hayana? yeah in this position for what you want to learn with black you're going to play bishop b4 here right Yes. Yeah. I don't think you could play this position. Although you could play it with white. Well, this is this is my chessable course. Which I uh, mm -hmm. committed to do. Yeah, this is still my chessable course. Now, in this position, uh, white has options. And I chose queen c2, the Capablanca variation. Right. And I like to play rook d1 in queen's gambits because my opponents are always confused. They're always expecting the rook to go to c1. But I'm more interested in stopping my opponent from playing e5 and c5, in which case the rook is better on d1. Make a sense. Make a sense. Yeah. Now, when you play rook d1 in qgds, don't play cd. Then your rook doesn't make any sense on d1. Okay. Okay, because you want this bishop to stay back here forever. Okay, he played rook e8, and I don't want to move my bishop because then he'll take on c4. So I played a3. I try to play a move that helps me a little bit. Right. Okay. Then he played a bad move because he's a bad player. So, you know, what do you want him to do? He played queen a5. You cannot blame him. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I played bishop d3 because I didn't see anything better to do. Then he traded, played h6. And you can play any move here. Not only can you take and play bishop h4, even h4 is okay. Oh that, my that's, God. that's a Dina kind of move. Oh yeah, how do you know that? Because you told me last game you like to play h4. Well, that was more when, yeah, to, uh, yeah, actually, yes. But that was more, I, I like, I'm... For positional h4, but if mm -hmm. you say so, I can also try to attack. Yeah. Okay, I played bishop h4, because this was the 1990s, so we didn't play h4 then. Okay, he played b5, and I put my bishop back on e2 just so my rook wouldn't be blocked. Correct. And he played b4, which is good. The engine says he's playing okay. So for some reason, which I don't understand... Queen takes is much better than bishop takes. But I don't know why. Why is queen takes so much better? Uh, I assume you want to attack b2, maybe? Maybe. Well, he played bishop takes, which makes more sense to me. And Absolutely. I castled go Ben. Okay, now he made a mistake. The engine already says I'm plus one. Because white has everything he wants. All, all pieces are out. Bishop on c8 is still bad. Weak c pawn. So he played the thematic c5. And my move was more thematic. Although the engine doesn't like it. Uh, d5. That's what I played. Yeah. Thematic. No, the engine says I'm a big advantage. Thematic. Though. Yeah. Okay, it says he must play bishop c3. It says that's forced. And then I play d, e, and I'm up 0. 0.7. I just got two bishops okay. for nothing. 
He played bishop b7, which is a mistake. I took on e6. And now he made another mistake. So which way's better? Should black take with the f pawn or the rook? If you had black, what would you do? He must have taken with the rook, and you're saying that with the pawn was better? Yeah, how do you know that? Well, because it's like you are like psychologically, you're setting me for something which is illogical. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, like, uh, careful, you're gonna, like, something like you're gonna be surprised. Okay, why is, why is rook takes e6 worse? That's a good question for you in Queen's Gambit positions. Okay, there must be some, I would say there must be some tactical uh, explanation because positionally, obviously, you want to take with a rook. But uh, why is rook takes bad? Um, is there something about f5 square? Like, no, but no, probably not. Um, like, hmm, why are you taking with the pawn? <coughs> um, d5? You gotta go to d5? No. It's like, I'm saying tactical, but I'm looking for positional explanation. It is a positional explanation. Oh, so then definitely, I mean, there is something about these squares. Yeah, you're, you're one square away. <laughs> this and no, this? No, this one on c4. Oh, you want to block? No, bishop c4. Oh, because, yeah, oh, f-pawn's really diagonal. weak. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that diagonal is so weak as my bishop can go to c4, which is what happened. Yes. That's what happened. Okay, he played rook e8. The engine says my move is the second best or third best. It's like tied for first. Okay. I played aggressive because I was younger in 1993. So I played knight b5 to play knight d6. Wow. Okay, you he's... You were, yeah, you were more aggressive in young I was def Yeah, because I could calculate then. I can't calculate now. Make a sense. Now I'm like calculating where's my iced tea and I can't find it and it's in my hand. And I'm like, oh. Now I can't calculate now. Okay, he played a move that... I'm sure if it was a hot one, you would find it. Yeah. He played a move that low-rated players like. So now we're going to find out if you're low-rated or not. Okay. <laughs> what move do low-rated players like with black here? Uh, let me see. Uh, takes on F3. Yeah. Yeah, the engine hates that move. Obviously, you don't give away your strongest bishop. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember the game yesterday where my bishop was on this diagonal and I played queen takes g6 check or queen g6 check? I'm having those good memories again. Yes, yes, I was thinking about it because oh. you have it here as well. Okay, he played knight e5. And okay. I played bishop f6, which is the best move. And he played G takes, which is not the best move, but he's, I'm already plus six. And the reason I'm plus six, in my opinion, you may disagree, is the bishop on B4. I think if the okay. bishop was on F8, I'd be like plus two. But bishop on B4 can't get back into the game. It's trapped. It's po worse than a pawn. Positionally, the worst. Yeah, so he took. I played okay. knight d6. He played queen c7. Oh, which is, which is terrible. Right. Yeah. About. Okay, now every move wins. You can't find a move that doesn't win. But I, I played the safest move that wins. Right. Uh, king h1. That's what I played. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good at guessing. Mm -hmm. He played rook d8. I played rook g1 check. King F8. Okay. I played Queen E4 because my Queen's uh -huh. on his Rook, so he can't play Rook takes D6. He played Rook B8. I played Knife F5. Takes takes. Okay. Knight takes C4. Queen takes. Yeah, and this uh -huh. is this is plus five point five or something. Rook oh, D8. Wait. Rook G1, Queen C6. Oh no, my pawn's attacked. Mm. So I defended it. E4? E4? No. No. 
when I say I defended it, I mean I defended it and threatened mate. Oh, queen g4. Yeah. Then he resigned. Yeah, I think move like e4 might even lose the advantage in a way. I don't know if you can lose the advantage because you have a knight on f5 against the bishop on b4. So, I mean, right. my knight's on f5 forever. His bishop's on b4 forever. Boo. Yeah. Boo to his bishop. All he has to do is play bishop e6 and he's okay. Yes. Nice. Man, I don't play games like that now. Now I just play boring draws that are 50 moves. Or you don't play at all. That's more likely. Okay. That was a cool game. I really loved it. Let me check real quick the beginning because mm -hmm. I'm not sure I remember it. Yeah, in this position... Oh, sorry. I went too far. Yeah, this is called the Orthodox Knight BD7. You wouldn't play that with black because you're not orthodox. Yeah. Well, my father was, but yeah. Ooh. Then he would play knight bd7. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, bishop that's, c4, that's okay. knight. So in my chessable course, uh, I don't know what I recommend in this position, but I, I think it's rook c1. Fishman. Fishman's played Fishbine. Fishbine, right, sorry. Unless, unless it's somebody else, but it's probably Fishbine. It's definitely Fishbine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I get confused with him a lot. One time in the Chicago Open about 10 years ago, I got paired with Gabriel Sargisian. And he wrote Alex Fishbein on his score sheet. He was playing me. Oh, and I said, I said, wrong guy, but leave the name there in case you win. And then he won, so I guess I didn't lose to him. <laughs> Why did you lose to us? You should have lost. Yeah, I agree. It's the only game I ever lost. I had yeah. black against Sargisian. It wasn't fair. Okay. Let's. Let's watch your next win. Okay, this Mark guy. Adams. This guy's like twenty one hundred, but they gave him Michael Adams rating because they're silly. Mm. This we've seen before yesterday. Wow. Okay, so I take, mm -hmm. and I used to play Queen D two every game. And then he played rook e8, which is weird. Now, if you're in a frisky mood and you want to be crazy, okay, that could happen sometimes. You just feel like it. You can castle a queenside in these lines and play like a lunatic and play h4, Whoa, g4. Seriously? You can do it. Yeah, the engine says white's slightly better here, so you can do it. It's allowed. But... You know, you, you, you sometimes you lose in 20 moves. Sometimes you win in 20 moves. So that depends on your, uh, you know, how you feel that day. Makes sense. Yeah, sounds like my my usual practice. Yeah, you just yes. you, you, you just you just play for checkmate. Correct. Okay, but I played rook d1. I've played that, but usually I do it in blitz chess. Okay, he played b6. Here is the question. Okay, like I have an answer. Yeah. I I was I tried to play some blitz after our lesson and I did this and somewhere here I mean obviously I didn't remember anything. So somewhere <laughs> here maybe he played ninety seven and played twenty two. Yeah, that's not like, good. No, yeah, but okay here like in general what's the idea behind twenty two? Like it's just to put the rook quick. Yeah, you want to play rook d one and stop opponent from playing c five or e five. Oh, so it's a quick prophylactical thinking from their pawn breaks in the center. Yeah, exactly. Got it, mm -hmm. got it. But it only works when they attack the bishop and then you took. It doesn't work when they don't touch your bishop and they develop. Right, then it doesn't work for a couple of reasons because they're knights here, so they can play c5. Also, they can throw knight e4 in and your queen's sort of silly. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I felt. Okay, okay. Lesson yeah. learned. Okay. So, yeah, B6 he played. It's unusual to mix B6 and rookie 8. Okay, I played bishop D3. So he took. And he played bishop A6, which is just bad. That weakens oh. all the white squares on the queen side. I mean, he has two bishops, but now he doesn't. So I play queen E2, which is best. And he played queen C8, which is also fishy. It's very easy to play white. It's fun to have white here. Yes, because like you, you neutralize all their, like they don't have any, any plan, right? Yeah, like if somehow they get everything they want to do, then it's equal. <laughs> I see. Okay, he played queen B7. Yay, 1,221 bits for ABBA. Well, I don't get it. Because one, two, two, one. Rating. One, two, two, one. For it's ABBA. must see his rating. It, but he said for ABBA, the ABBA box set, the chess song written by the ABBA members. Mm. A is one, B is two. Ugh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can't you make A like a million and B two million and then start donating? Come on. One and two. Yeah, guys, you need to support the coach mm -hmm. or else who's going to support him? Exactly. Hopefully Karen. Okay, so now I played e4, so my position is beautiful. Knight okay. d7. Okay, then I had enough of beautiful. Now it's time to win. So e5, d5. Rawr. Very aggressive. And we get the same thing we had last game. So I guess you're going to see it a lot in the Queen's Gambit. You, you have this, you know, diagonal open to the black king, and f7 isn't protected sufficiently. Obviously, we're threatening c7 here. So he played c6, which the engine says is forced, and I played knight f4. Beautiful position for white. He played b5, which the engine says is right. I played queen c2, and now he made a very bad move. It says he has to play c5. And then after e6, yeah, D5. yeah, then after e6, I'm better. But he made a bad move, bishop g5. And it's a bad move because... He... There's more than one reason, but I played queen f5. Oh, I have a wow. threat. I have threats. Oh, wow. Yeah, loose pieces drop off. So, like... This bishop is under attack, and this knight is under attack, and this attacks both of them again. I think you you just quoted uh, John Nunn in, in his book, right? Mm. He said that. I don't think he did this with his finger, off. though. <clears throat> I had it in Russian. Okay. Okay, so he played rook e7. He's already lost. <clears throat> and I played e6. Yay, go Ben. Hey, e6 is the best move. Man, I used to be younger. It's okay, Ben. Don't worry. I'll get back to you. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he took my knight. But if he takes on e6, knight e6, his game's no good. Knight g5 is coming. So he, he I played rook takes. He has to trade. And then I put my rook behind my pawn. And pawn on d7 is the greatest pawn ever. Yeah, that's basically already a done mm -hmm. game. Okay, and I wrapped it up quickly. Can't take as a check. Oh boy. A6. Let the men alone. Don't, A, don't A6 darker. is a good move. It gives them a good pawn structure. Okay, what did I do? What move did I make? I assume something like rook d5. Yes, exactly or rook d5. Rook d3. I didn't see rook d3. Rook d5 is better. Here's yeah, after rook, rook d3. So it's like no, after rook d3, he has, he has queen d7. 
And, th and then when I take, I'm only up a queen. Exactly. You didn't uh, checkmate in two. Right. If you play queen takes now, then I have mate. Well, what if they play queen d6? You don't have checkmate right away. Yeah, but this is mate in four. Okay, but well, what if queen b6? There's no mate. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it, it says mate uh -huh. in ten. It announces mate. Mate in ten. <laughs> okay. The best move after rook d5... Oh, yeah, queen b6 is the best move. You lasted 10 moves. See? That's good. That's, that's good strong. bullet skills. Good bullet skills. Yes. Okay. okay, but now we're just being silly. Let me see. If I may. This game, you... Basically, the mistake was... Bishop a6 or b6? Yeah, yeah bishop a6 is a mistake. Then he's just worse. Because he, okay, he so can't get c5 in, and I'm getting an e4. So I assume they should play something like b bishop b7. Yeah, bishop b7 is reasonable. I still play e4. Okay. Well, white's yes. still better, because, like, rook e8, b6 is weird. That's interesting. You know, this game reminded me of one line where I had a debate with a friend of mine. I mean, I assume the game was over, right? Unless you wanted to show how you checkmate it. Yeah, it's over. He resigned. Yeah. So I, I started playing this line recently with Black. And uh, they play g3. And it's something like... I, I don't think I'm confusing it. So, But it's something like this. I don't remember the exact move order. I... Somewhere... Damn, I would have... Like, okay, I need to turn the board. I can I flip the that. board, but I don't know if it flips for you. Yeah, yeah, I flipped at it. Uh, I think it's something like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe somewhere, like, they attack, you go back, they go here, and then, like, this position. Mm-hmm. Like this, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, or maybe it's, oh, actually, I think they do it, like, I don't know, I think they do it here, like, knight of three. Like, maybe queen here, then c6. I mean, I had a game in Reykjavik Open in the last round here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook d1, like knight d7, rook d1. And where was it? Oh. So basically, my question was, have you, are you familiar with this? And if you are? I'm not familiar with this exact position, but I know bishop f4, knight h5 ideas. Yeah, like, what, what, like I, I want to ask you, I wanted to ask you what you thought about this kind of structure because it's kind of the same where, like, you have two bishops in the end. I, I mean, I have to pull up my game mm -hmm. to find the exact. That would be a better idea than guessing what happened. Yeah. Right, but it's like kind of the same that because of they have two bishops, but like there is absolutely no counterplay. I actually okay, never mind. I'll find the exact move order mm -hmm. later. Yeah. So I how did you do in the game? How did I you do? Lost, and I oh. lost my, I, I missed by half a point my fifth I am norm. Mm -hmm. You know whose fault it was? Yes, it was fault of Nate Solon. Very good. That's what I was going to say. Very good. See? Yeah. I can read your mind. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Nate Solon, he's chessable course he, for one night of three. Yeah, he's the scapegoat. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Boy, he's like the nicest guy that you can hate. Well, I definitely hate him. There yeah. is no other way. Right, but he's like the nicest guy I've ever met. I've known him since he was I a little kid. I don't hear it. <laughs> he, the guy doesn't exist for me. Yeah. He stole my, my, my pride. Okay, I found the move order. I found the game. Mm -hmm. I'll show you quickly. Okay. Just, just your general idea. Maybe... Oh, my God. It's completely different. My... <laughs> yeah... See guys, that's the C chat. That's that's why I'm not a grandmaster yet because I don't remember move orders of my games that I played two months ago. Okay, e six, g three, bishop b four, bishop d two, and here bishop e seven. That's the position. Mm -hmm. Bishop e seven, bishop g two, uh, d five. Uh, Knight of three, short castle, short castle. Okay. 
And like I was going here on purpose because I thought it was playable. Mm -hmm. It's playable. Ninety-seven. Mm -hmm. C six. Like, is it playable or is it like completely? No, this and is yeah, this like, is this is completely fine. Four. This is completely fine. You think it's playable? Like, a, I know it's a playable. Five? Yeah. It's playable for black. Yeah, of course. You think so? Yeah, I know so. Okay, well, I note it. I definitely note it. Yeah, because I thought it was like pretty one sided, like, you know? Yeah, like, typically uh, you're going to play like b6, bishop a6, or b6, bishop b7, and then play for c5. Oh, bishop b7 and c5. Yeah, or you could play bishop a6 if you like that. Yeah. In the game, he played a4, which is stupid because there is this square. That yeah, I don't like a4. It. Yeah. Yeah. And then here, I didn't find the best maneuver, which is a Karakan maneuver. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you can find I mean, you can find it because you have an engine. So it's knight b8, knight a and then with idea knight a6. And knight yeah, a4. if you want your knight to b4. You can play f5 here if you want to play for a win. Also good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I nothing, play for a win. nothing wrong with f5. Well, you are playing for a win because I think like knight back here is already a draw. <laughs> yeah. You're repeating moves. So if you're repeating moves and you're the one who stops repeating, you can't say, is this, I, is this opening good for me? No, I mean, no, I, 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 I miss, I miss repeat it. It's like, it wasn't like that. It's mm -hmm. like in the game, I couldn't, obviously if I could, I would. He played, yeah, because he played like bishop c1, so I couldn't. Like knight f6 doesn't repeat because the bishop is on c1, not on d2. Yeah, but you can still play knight f6. He might play bishop f4. Knight f6 is, is, is the norm. Oh, yeah, I did, and he played knight d2. Okay. And here I had this knight b8. I right, think. you can play your knight to b4, yeah. Knight, knight b8. But that's okay knight if you don't. It's If you don't, you can still play b6 and bishop a6 or b7 and c5. And I took... The structure, like I had zero. No, no, you no, structure. no, you don't do that. No, that's the mistake. No, right? don't do that. No, no. I yeah, think. if you're if you're not gonna do this because they don't play the silly a4, you play b6, bishop b7, and often when they play e4, you ignore it. Oh wow. Like e4, you're like, yeah, you play e4, and you like give them a slow clap. <laughs> and just play like, you know, slum to see him. In fact, here it says knight b8, c5. You don't have to take on, on e4. Okay. You could just play bishop b7 or bishop a6. You don't, this e5, knight e8 is fine because your knight has c7. Then you can play the, the Dina maneuver. And then eventually, oh, nice. uh, and eventually you play c5 and you're better. Eventually. Yeah, I think this was, I actually, I now that you say it, I remember from analyzing the game after, I remember that for me, obviously, the big why the reason I took is because I was afraid of e4 and e5, but the computer said there was no problem. With right. That. I yeah. guess it's because there is a PN though. I remember one of the coaches uh, told me this rule that whatever, like, bishop is f like fan there's going to be no attack because it's just too slow for them to bring Here, write, write this down. Well. You have a pen, a pencil? Pen, sil, yes, okay. I have everything. Write down Kaidenov Sarawan. U.S. Championship 1984, 1994, sorry. Okay, Yasser. Yeah, Yasser was black. And this was very funny because what happened was, wait, I have, wait, to, get, I have to get to your line. Yeah, Kaidenov's white against Sarawan, 1994 U.S. Championship in Key West. So what's funny was, they played a Catalan like this, and Kaidenov played knight bd2, and then like all of a sudden, Sarawan played bishop e7, and Kaidenov, yes. they analyzed the game afterwards, and Kaidenov said, so you're just playing theory down a tempo, and Yasser said, yes. <laughs> okay, Kaidenov got his lunch handed to Sarawan destroyed Kaidenov with black. Wow. And you have to yeah. see the way he just he just he took he took him to school. Oh no. Nice. But I like the way Yasser's like, yes, I'm down a tempo in theory. Nice. And you were there, like you remember what they analyzed in nineteen ninety four? Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, I remember everything I've ever seen. That way I can use it in lessons later. That's amazing. So, okay, I, like the reason I thought about it, actually, like, to be honest, there is not much common with the position that you just showed before. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, where were we? Like, somewhere here? Uh, yes, it's like whenever, obviously, whenever I took on C4, which is, where did you take C4? Uh, Six, see here, whatever I took, mm -hmm. um, and I took, I just, it's the same structure, kind of. Okay, there's G7, but it's kind of the same structure. Mm -hmm. And later on in the game, I think I, did I have bishops? Let me see. Yeah, this is this is better for white than the QGD oh. because you're, the bishop is so good on the diagonal. Let me show what happened. I played knight D5. Uh-huh. He played... Uh, if I bishop d2, I play knight b4. Thanks, Marriott, today. So, so that's exactly this position was the reason uh -huh. I remembered this and uh -huh. I had this question. Uh -huh. It's like if you look at this, it's like, and then you compare it to your game, mm -hmm. it's kind of the same e3 d4 pila, you know, pila structure. Mm -hmm. Pila structure where black has two bishops, uh, specifically this bishop. Uh, dark bishop extra, but just because of this structure, there is no pawn break for black, and then black just is completely worse all the game because yeah. they cannot do any counterplay. Like mm -hmm. just when you take on right, yeah. And those positions are even better for white than these positions because the bishop on g two is so good. I mean, at least here the bishop is out on b seven. Uh, wait, you're comparing to your game. Yeah, I'm saying, like, your game, your position's even worse because the bishop on g2 is good. Oh, yes, 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 you're right. Like, for instance, like, in some ideal world, yes, if you just, instead, like, you put the bishop to g2 and the pawn back, to, like, a pawn to c6. There, there's a QGD game, Sarawan beat Karpov, and Sarawan was white, and... He just played g3, bishop g2 in the middle of a qgd. He just like QGD. made it, he just made it a Catalan. Oh, and Karpov yes. sacked a piece to try to keep Sarawan's king on e1, but Sarawan said, That's fine, I'm up a piece. So Sarawan won. Okay. So you can uh, find that game, Sarawan Karpov. It might have been 1993, but I could be making that up. Could be 82, 83. I see someone is Sarawan Yasser's fan. I've known Yasser since before you were born. I love hearing that. That makes mm -hmm. me so good. Yeah. Yasser's even older than me, which is crazy. Oh, that's amazing. I bet you love hearing that. Yeah, he's the only person I've ever met who's older than me. QDD into Catalan, you said? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was another game. Uh, Gregory Kaidan of Yasser Servan. Uh, right, that was a Catalan where in, from 94, Key West where he played bishop e4, bishop e7, just lost to tempo, and then won easily. Nice. Crushed Kaidanov. Nice. Nice. Okay, okay. I think we're good. I, I'm, I'm glad that I managed to compare and get your opinion on that one, because mm -hmm. it's definitely um, interesting to compare different, like, kind of similarities in, from different openings, but same bone structures. Yeah, d d technically, when you're taking on c4, when you have the triangle pawn structure, it's because you're trying to play c5 or e5. And right. since since you had the pawns here, you you never had to take on c4. You weren't worried about him capturing, so that was positionally very bad. But his his yeah. a4 is also positionally very bad. So yes, yeah. yes, of course. So this was an im you were playing. This was uh, an IM I was playing the last round. It was uh, like I had a tournament of my life because I beat this um, some G GM 2600 in 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 30 moves. Yeah, I saw and that game. Some other GM. Yeah. 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 So, and I was like going for my fifth IM norm, but yeah, the last round I needed the draw for that. Mm -hmm. And then also in the round eight, I was playing a GM who was like retired re retired GM because he was in 2400, but still. 
um i was kind of winning but i only managed i only did a draw it was like a grandmaster escape for me but um it was a great tour but it was sad to finish it at a loss because i have this theory it doesn't matter how good or bad your tournament is what matters is the result of your last game because this is the impression <laughs> that you lived the tournament. that's right that's true yeah by the way the game sarawan karpov was from 82 oh nice so when i wasn't born yet that's right in london i definitely wasn't born in london no um question though let me think um wait i forgot my question damn i forgot it i had a question you'll remember okay, it as soon as you later. log off then you'll remember yeah yeah, yeah no it'll get back to me okay then uh This game we looked at last time. Yeah, this is actually one of my favorite games in this opening. Against This was in the U.S. Open, and I was playing a 2170. Okay. Yeah, this is a real beatdown. And, and it's my usual queen c2, rook d1. So we transpose. Yeah, this is this is a very important strategical game to see what he did wrong and what I how I punished him. So he played b6, that's new. Bishop b7, rook c8. And I just played rook f e1. I'm waiting for him. But he played h6, so he's waiting for me. Okay, so now I took, but I can play bishop h4. But I had a specific idea in mind. I was going to play the move e4. Okay. It's hard for him to play c5 ever because my rook's on d1. So it's very risky to play c5 at any point. Okay, he made a mistake here. He should play bishop b4. And this is something I talk to my students uh, about a lot. And I think we talked about it yesterday for 10 seconds. But like somebody makes a move and you feel like, okay, I have to react to that move. And then a move like bishop b4 doesn't occur to like a lot of lower rated players because they're just thinking I have to take this or I have to take that. There's no other move to consider. And in fact, the engine doesn't take on e4. That's not one of the top four moves. That's what my opponent did. I remember you said that. Like, yeah, but I mean, letting the guy play chess e. Chess is not checkers. You know, if the guy plays e5 and you play knight e7 and c5, like, you know, what's the problem? Or you could even take on right. c4 first. Okay, so he took. This is a mistake. Knight takes. Now he's worse. Now, even though c5 is a pawn sacrifice, it's the only move. After c5, I take, and you just play queen c7. Um. And then the engine says white's better. But if you don't play c5, then you're going to see what happened to him, which is worse. Okay. Okay, so sometimes you have to play these pawn sacrifices to activate your pieces. He played knight takes. Okay, again, he's reacting to my knight take. Now, he, now you can never play c5. So black got checkmated in seven moves. And you're like, wait a minute, I have a question. How? <laughs> okay, so he played queen c7. So there's only one move you can play. It doesn't matter what the engine says, this is the only move. You highlighted the right piece, that was good. Yeah, c5. Yeah, and he's just dead. His bishop is dead forever. That's amazing. You just give away the d5 square, but you uh -huh. say, hey, you don't have any knight to go there. Right, now my bishop's there too, so I still have control. Amazing. Okay, play played rook d8. I played b4. Okay, and then I ignored him and played knight e5, because now it's time to checkmate him. I agree. And it says I'm plus three here. Okay, and he blundered. He said, excuse me, I'm rated 2170. It's time for me to blunder. 
And I said, no talking. He took on B4. Now let's see the great attacking skills of Dina Belenkaya. Well, I definitely want to start with Bishop H7, King F8, and then bring the Rook. Plus okay, H2. I played Bishop H7. If he plays King H, shape made in one. So King F8. Unless you kind of want to, you want to sacrifice and then Rook takes, but you still have two moves to make, like Queen takes Queen F5, but it's still not me. So I'll probably just go Rook to uh, E3 or yes, Rook to E3. Boo, 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 boo. Knight of seven. Yeah. You, you like when your chess coach boos you? Is that good? I love it. Boo. I love it. It's amazing. Keep, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Okay, let me see. Uh, wait. Um, I, don't I like the way you get stuck on one idea. It's like rook e3 or rook f3 like every move. There's no other moves in chess. I mean, you can take the pawn, but who needs a pawn when we were looking for the king? Mm -hmm. G is not making any sense. You, oh. could, you could be a grandmaster and do both, right? Oh, queen e6 and you attack queen g8. I didn't yeah. see that you would attack queen g8. Yeah, now he, I understand. He, he resigned here. Oh, you were so strong, Ben. Well, this was 2009, although I was strong in 2009. It's yeah. true. Yeah, I used to run yeah. over people. Now they run over me. And then I, get, I have a lot of insurance because I'm old, so I still make some money. Yeah, that's the most important. Like, always sign up for the best insurance company mm -hmm. in case there are some flaws in the room or stuff like that. Yeah, his bishop okay. on b7 was never any good. Correct. Yeah, that was a fun game. I loved it. Let me see. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. once again. Don't yeah, you do, you do what you have to do. Uh, so we go queen c2 because they didn't attack us. We go, okay, it's the same idea like before. Mm -hmm. We do not care about our king. We'll leave the, his majesty in the center. We don't care about the bishop. Um, yeah, we we're waiting for him them. to take on c4, hopefully, to move our bishop. Usually they don't do it, but we have to hope. Yes, so we can postpone it. Okay, and if they go h6 we don't take anymore because knight takes my guess would be right you play bishop h4 or you can play the dina move because you're dina oh dina move h4 is... oh h4 yes my move correct you can play that there's a famous yes. kasparov game from the 80s where it's a qgd h6 h4 and he wins in like 25 moves like he always did Kasparov who? Uh, I don't know, Doofus. I don't remember who he was playing. Somebody not noteworthy. Some weak okay. GM. Like, maybe and me. And Saravan was against Kasparov in 1992? Uh, no, that was, was Sarawan Karpov. Ah, Karpov. It, or was it Karpov Saravan? No, it was Sarawan Karpov. Okay. And then Shatter, the other game I'm was from 1994. That was Kaidenov Sarawan. Okay. Chatter, whoever post, posted that game was wrong because you needed to swap the players. Also, you have Chatter to be careful because those guys played a lot. So you could easily pick the wrong game. Yes, yes. But you'll see this the same. You'll see the opening is right and you'll be like, all right. Yeah, yeah, make a sense. Yeah, the Karpov sacked a piece and never got enough compensation. And Kaidenov, Kaidenov had white in a Catalan. Yay, thanks, Fen Beingold. You're the best. Wow. Although, I that I Dina's the best at drawing them. arrows. Damn. Yeah. It's like, actually, arrows are very, like, they really help. Mm-hmm. I don't okay. know if they help the chap, but they help us. Definitely, definitely. Was Karpov, Kasparov Duer 18, oh wait, 1981 was the H4 game? Kasparov Duer? Well, maybe. I don't know who the other guy is, so probably. Oh, okay, you don't know. Okay. No, I don't know the other guy. But you can okay. find a QGD game where it went H6, H4. Mm-hmm. 
Also, lately in QGDs, uh, Aronian's playing H4 for no reason. Oh. He's just like, okay, H4, it's my move. <laughs> it's time yeah, to play H4. Like, I, I play H4 all the time. This is how I beat an I am in my recent tournament. Uh, you know this I am. He's also hanging around US. Um, his name is, I, I think it's uh, Vocaturo, not, not Vocaturo, Vigorito, Vigorito. Yeah, he's tall. Yes, he's tall. So I beat him with H4, H5. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I usually do that whenever they have, like, just, I, I need to create a weakness. So I do it from positional standpoint. But I like that here you highlight that it's also... I beat Vigorito before you were born. Oh, I love hearing I that. think Vigorito's older than me. Oh, that's amazing. I, I think so. you love hearing yeah. that. He's much taller than me. Do you, have you ever met Luke Von Whaley? Yes, I okay. think so. Now, let me tell you how old I am. Okay, this is amazing. Wait, when, let me... Oh, yeah, Luke, he's the guy with the head glasses. Yeah, when, glasses. When, when I met Luke Von Whaley, I was taller than him. What? Yeah. That's, oh, that's how old I am. Yeah, I'm not yeah, taller than him so. now. No, he... Well, yeah, you're younger than what, Vicaturo. Yeah, when I, when I met Piquet, he was... Uh, not Piquet. When I met Von Whaley, he was 14. And then when he was 15, he was taller than me, but not 14. Yeah, so it's one year. I see. I see. That was cool. I liked it. It's definitely very educational. What is your... Um, uh, do you have any other games that you... Oh, whoa. Gabara Faris. Yeah, he actually changed his name. It used to be Georgius, and he changed it to Gabara. Did he also change his gender, or it was no. just the name change? No, he just changed his he just changed his last name. Did he get married, or no? I don't know why he changed his last name. I never asked him. I played him under both names many times because okay, he's from yeah. Michigan, like yeah, me. Well, so we played a lot in the eighties. So we changing names, but I yeah. can understand that. Mm -hmm. Wait, so what's your real name? Uh, no, I, I haven't changed. I, I, I know, guess. I know. Okay, so this is actually in my chessable course. Uh, in the, in the... Oh, Tarish. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and in this position, well, I recommend to play the E3 because I didn't want my students who are low rated to try to learn all the ins and outs of the Tarish. Too complicated. E3 is just symmetrical, but you're white. So I figured they wouldn't lose by force then. Correct. Because whenever they try to repeat, you're always better. Yeah. And now A3 is the move I recommend. And hopefully they move their bishop so you can take on C5 and play B4. They never seem okay. to do that. But Okay. And then I took. And you can get this position from a pan off Karo Khan. Except a6 is a weird move. Mm -hmm. Okay, and takes, takes. And now we have the, the Queen's Gambit declined, accepted position. Or declined or something. But with colors reversed. Accepted. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get b4 yeah. in very quickly. So go me. Bishop b6 is pretty passive. Bishop b2. Yeah. Okay, b5. And white slightly better here. Okay, and then I played a very good positional move here. Okay, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I can do it. Nice... Recommended by the engine. A pawn. Or knight. Or... Okay, this is why I hate this isolated phone. It's like so many options, I never know which direction. Yeah, the engine says they're all about the same. You don't have to worry so much. Hmm. Like if we go 94, they go 95. Um, if we go A4. Yeah, that's what I played. 
Yeah, that, that, that's definitely... And bad. what's funny is he didn't see Bishop A3, so I won the game, so I was winning immediately. And he's like... What? And he used to be like 2250. Oh, boy. So he played Knight A5, blocking my pawn. Now his knight can go to C4. Very strategical. Except for Bishop A3. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then, okay, the rest is silly. I played E4 because, you know, I was I was younger then. I understand. I would never play E4 now. I wouldn't even consider E4. E4 is crushing. E4 is the best move by a lot. Why do you think you would never consider it now? I'm too old. I would play Knight D4 and H3, Bishop F1. That's how I play mm -hmm. now. But yeah. I think that's also how I play. Um, and I always played. That's why everybody would call me Babushka. I, I call you that a lot. Right. It's because my style is very old and slow. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not old, but it's still slow. But sometimes people tell me that I need to wake up. They also call me Susie. Yeah. Wake up, little Susie. You, you don't know that song. You're not old enough. No, but I <laughs> heard the saying. So if he takes with the knight, then I check and win his knight. And the funny thing is the engine says he should do that. Man, tough engine. Yeah. Man, I used to roll over 2200s. I used to roll them. Imagine you used to roll people like me. Yeah, I used yeah. Man, look look at that final position. Right. God damn. Immigrants. Exactly. What? <laughs> okay, that that looks amazing. Yeah, but obviously he just blundered. But but I think getting to this position is pretty good. Like, I think this isolated pawn position, white has everything he wants, can block the pawn both ways. Bishop on b2 is good. Bishop on e6 is passive. He can't get a battery with his queen and bishop because my knight's on b5. My knight is on b5 defended. He can't attack it. It's up in his grill. So this is very pleasant for white. Point three, yeah, point four for amazing. white. It's crazy how one tempo can give so much advantage. I guess because it's a dynamic position. Like, I cannot believe like black here could be worse. Is black worse here? No, black has to play d four. It's his only hope. Then, oh, it, so then it's equal. To equalize. Yeah, it's then it's equal. That's... Yeah. But this game was played in nineteen ninety four, so I can't complain about my moves because who knows what I was thinking then. I have a very similar game to, to this position here with the bishop on b8, the, the same opening against Miguel Iescas Cordoba from, mm -hmm. from what year? Who? Uh, 19... <sighs> Probably like 1989 or 1990. Okay. If you can find that game, then he sacked all his pieces... And then I beat him off. He was I, I wasn't get losing. And then I had a b better end game, but it was a draw. And the game was like a thousand moves long. I think I only played him once. Opponent? What's that? What was your opponent once again? M Miguel Iescas Cordoba. It might just say Iescas. I L L E S C A S. I thought you guys okay. would like that if you noticed. Good job. Some of my I chat noticed. that you speak 20 different languages, or at least mm -hmm. you pretend that like you do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a very similar opening to that one. And bishop on b8, b5, knight b5, very similar. But he's better than this guy because he's a grandmaster. So he was attacking me and sacking. It was crazy. He's crazier than you because he's a grandmaster? Yeah, I was I was an IM at the time. Okay, got it. I knew the guy you played in Reykjavik wasn't a GM the last round. I said, was he an IM? Because he played A4. Oh. <laughs> so I yes, said, okay, yes, he beat you, but he wasn't a GM, so he's an IM. <laughs> yeah. Also, like I was thinking that I should probably share with you my sorrow 
when facing uh, my your body Nate. So mm -hmm. yeah, whatever you you think it's it's making sense. Thanks for the gifted sub, Fen Bindgold. Good name. We're five subs away for a thousand. Who dares give wow. five subs? That's that. That's how it should be. Capadonna, when when Dina's playing in Charlotte, I'm going to Charlotte to do work at the tournament. Although yeah, she'll be there. What kind of work? You'll be there before me. I'm getting there Friday morning, and I'm going to do like lectures and simuls and game analysis, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's why. You you're only gonna you gonna you gonna be with us for round one, right? Uh, when's your round one? It's on Wednesday. It's, it's on Wednesday. Oh yeah, I'll be here doing commentary. I won't be in Charlotte, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get to Charlotte Friday morning, and Thursday, which is Thanksgiving, is also Karen's birthday. Oh yeah. It's two holidays in one day. Oh, that's horrible! You get only one gift for two holidays. Terrible, yeah. I hate it. Um, okay, so do you? Um, I assume you're you're still you're still keeping the fire, right? Because Karen is not there. Wait, what am I doing? Keeping the fire. Keeping like, the fire. Like, like like party show must go on. The show must go on, right? Yeah. <laughs> Throwing a wood into the fire. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, um, I see we still have games here. No, we looked at all the games. All the games? Yeah. All eight? Yeah. We looked at three yesterday and five today. Oh, got it. So then... Didn't, like, didn't, you, didn't you memorize the games? I mean, <laughs> I, not the names, but yeah. Ah, that's true. No, no, it makes sense. Okay, so um, I could show you three first, five first moves of my buddy Nate. Okay. Your buddy Nate. So Nate played Knight of Three, and I knew he would play Knight of Three. So I was preparing. It's like the only game I was really preparing mm -hmm. for, and I failed the most, like with the opening Bishop G4, Bishop G2, C6, Short Castle, Knight of Six, H3. So if I take, I guess. I forgot. Maybe it was the best. Why didn't I take it? Because I kind of looked at it. But for some reason, I wasn't liking it. What does Engine say? Engine says... Oh, yeah, yeah, probably... I don't know. For for some reason, I thought that I... Like, I, I was like... Whenever I was preparing... Mm -hmm. Like, it was so ridiculous. I was looking at this, and I was like... Do I take or do I go? And I spent like 20 minutes on thinking, do I take or do I go back? And yeah, I you, haven't decided anything. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. You can't think 20 minutes here. That's wasting your time. No, 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 no. I mean, when I was preparing. Uh, oh, 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 when you were preparing. Okay. Yeah. When I was preparing before the game, I was just looking at this, and I was like, for 20 minutes, do I take mm -hmm. or do I get back? And I didn't decide anything, so I just wasted 20 minutes of my life. <laughs> for, and, like, only got, like, my tired my brain. So, like, I was really frustrated here in the mm -hmm. game. And then he goes C4. I'm like, okay, E6. And here he goes something that I've never seen before, which is apparently like new engine style line and that makes all the sense now that she said that he has a course here. Mm -hmm. So he went, I went 97 and he took. I didn't take with a pawn because I thought it would be worse, plus he has probably this plan like transferring the bishop to d3 or I don't know, like getting this bishop. So I thought that Karo Khan structure would be making perfect sense because mm -hmm. I'm playing Karo Khan with black. And the problem is after this, like, it's like Bly has the only way to equalize, which is a completely crazy engine mm -hmm. move, which is 94. I've had very similar position with Black, and I didn't have a good time. Hmm. Yeah, because okay. I, I played this way with Black also. Uh-huh. So 95, uh, would, 94 would be the best. I played Bishop G6, and mm -hmm. I thought I was fine in the game. Mm -hmm. I started thinking somewhere near here but the truth is he always kept the advantage and knight b4 and knight takes and pawn takes and he was just forever oh sorry it's bishop takes bishop takes bishop takes pawn takes it was he was forever 
Queen A4, Queen A6. I mean, it's not you, very You've only shown choice. me like two or three of your games, and you make the same mistake every game. Which is. You make forcing the... moves when you don't have to. Oh, you change yeah, the position a lot. You change the position. Very... Yeah, you yeah, don't want to play knight takes. Knight takes knight e4. Like you could. The engine doesn't do any of that. Just develop your pieces. Yeah. So long you see him. Fierce, you know. Just, just, just get your pieces out. That that makes perfect sense. You know, um, so I always think that I have like it's like the debate of my of my life. I always think and say that I'm a positional player, but then yeah, every expert who looks at my games says that I'm a dynamical player because I always have this, you know, like like stick in the ass that I cannot sit on the same spot. I always try to, to do something, which is like you say, change the position. No, I used to work with Kaidanov in 1993 and 1994 when I had the Sanford Fellowship. We talked about that. And he told me this was my big mistake. I'm always changing the position. I'm always doing everything instead of just improving my position. And then he would say, maintain tension with his Russian accent. Maintain tension. Maintain tension. Maintain tension. Yeah. Maintain tension. yeah. Your Russian accent is better for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering why. Confused. Yeah. yeah, like even yeah, like knight takes, and even even here, I guess knight e4 is okay. But yeah, this this is just you, the engine said you're slightly worse. Now the engine says like you're lost. But yeah, because like when you put in the real engine, like it will say like plus one for white. Yeah. And um, see, like, also, Reti, it's like you're just like my priest right now when I'm in church, like, uh, con confessing. So Reti is my biggest nightmare for Black mm -hmm. because I have these tons of kind of files that I look, like, that I, that I am supposed to play. And I never have anything concrete and I never know like what's the concrete move order. And every time white just does some different move order, like somewhere here H4 or there H4 or there C4. And every time I get confused and I and I somehow always get worse positions, even like for the most harmless things, which are like this. Hopefully not E5 because that hangs your pawn. Yes. Yeah, sorry. sorry, I'll just, I'll just make it mm -hmm. uh, like... Like, well, you can find a different line against knight f3. Like, you don't yes, have to play d5, bishop g4 if you're not getting good results. Like, even this, I, I would always lose for some of that point, but... Yeah, you don't have to play this line. You can play another line that you that speaks to you better. Yeah, maybe it's just this line that I shouldn't play. I agree. But the line is like, I try. what did I try? I, I once tried, okay, this is a path line, which is like... I try this knight c6, but okay, here I think if they go c4, they'll get advantage. But uh, if they go g3, wait, what am I showing? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's a rarity. We're talking about rarity. So if I go here, I think mm -hmm. d4 they should go, because if they go bishop g2, then we go e5, we're cool. Mm -hmm. but they, have to, they will go d4 and then bishop f5, but I think if they somewhere go c4 they will they must be yeah better. it's it's a jo jobavo london a tempo down yes exactly so eventually they will be better i don't remember the exact but, but like, I, I know it's just a bad line you played it once and you don't want to repeat it mm -hmm. yeah but um uh, nate Solon was like like literally i was like spending this half an hour looking at this like what do i play here and he has all the games so i knew he would play right mm -hmm. and yet i couldn't i couldn't prepare and then i couldn't do the opening so it was a complete disaster like i couldn't prepare in terms of i tried and i failed mm -hmm. also sometimes in chess you lose it's just one game <laughs> i know but it's it's like it, for me the bad thing was that um like, I knew he would play Reti, and I knew I had files, and I was looking at my files, and I wasn't understanding anything, so it's probably rolling off my files, but but I was like, it's like as if I lost already before the game started. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. I was like, oh my god, Reti, what am I going to do? It's funny. Um, Joel Benjamin was playing Ray Robson about 11 years ago. And Joel played knight f3, 
on move one. And when the game ended, Ray Robinson said, why did you play knight f3? Because Droll usually doesn't do that. And Droll said, when people play knight f3, they always beat you. Beautiful. That's what I'm, he said. I'm, right. I'm at the point of that purchase after purchasing Ben Fine Gold 1d4, I should purchase Nate Soul and the White Knight of 3. <laughs> like this, I'll, I'll use. Yeah, especially if you're going to play it with both sides. Yeah. Yeah, even though yeah. you don't, even though you don't like him, you can still take his analysis and use it against him. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, well, he's with all respect, he's not a GM. That's like the worst. That's the worst. He's is he an IM? He's not an I. He's an FM. That's the worst insult. He, the guy wrote the course on an mm -hmm. opening, and he's not even an IM. <laughs> yeah, when he was a kid, when he was a kid, he was really good. He was twenty three hundred, and he was like fifteen. And then he like stopped playing chess for a long time. He started doing other he's... stuff. Then he came back into chess about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. But he just stopped playing. He didn't play chess at all for a long time. But I assume even though he is an FM, so that he doesn't take it wrong, uh, he can still be analyzing like with yeah. super engines and making a, yep. a repertoire of a grandmaster level, right? Yeah, he's very um, organized. That's the word I wanted to use. Very yeah, organized. Opposite yeah. Of me. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Makes sense. Okay, interesting. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that to my chessable collection then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at least it seems um, like you study hard, so that's good. You have good habits. You... Yeah. So you said you think Queen's Gambit is a good or, or Queen's Gambit accepted is a good opening. It's fine for black. Yeah. But again, if you don't like the results, it doesn't. Maybe it's just not for you. Yeah, I'm less like trying a six or bishop g four, but it's kind of all the same. Yeah, people I mean, aren't playing bishop g four very often now. They're playing a six, and I mean bishop g four is from a long time ago. Even b five, most people just play knight f six or e six here. Oh, then we transpose. Then I know. Then I want to know because I yeah. played it for ten years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what most yeah most GMs don't play B five or Bishop G four anymore. This happened. This happened like two days ago in uh, in Isle of Man and like Black played Knight F six. Game ended in a draw, obviously, because all the games end in a draw. Mm. Yeah, if you're having bad results with the opening, it doesn't mean the opening's bad. It could be you don't like it. You just don't know you don't like it. You don't like the positions. Yes. Yes, that rings the bell. And, um, four knight of six, I go now. And here, I mean, I'll find it in your course, mm -hmm. but you. Knight c3. Knight c okay, so you don't play knight no. of g3 or knight because you no. said you don't play Catalan. Right. Yeah, and, and queen c2. Go, so, and you go queen, I think it's d5. There's many moves black can play. That's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, c5, d5, knight c6, castles. Trying to remember my file. Probably this. And then it's Yeah, they don't play bishop g5 right away because take on c4 is good for black. Okay. You take on d5. Is... You take on d5. And then they can take all three ways, but usually they take with the pawn. Now you play bishop g5. And after h6, you have a decision. Bishop f6 is solid and boring, and bishop h4 is crazy. So in the chessable course, I recommend bishop f6 because it's for lower rated players. I don't want them to have the craziest position ever. Oh, I see. By the way, I was playing a guy rated 2170 in the first round of the National Open in 2001. And here's our game. Don't blink. So what? I thought nine minutes and played queen c7. And he thought one second and played queen d4. Oh. Yeah, and I did this and then he didn't resign. He played like takes and then he played on till oh. move 25. But he played very quickly and then he resigned. So I beat him in like 15 yeah. minutes. Was he young? Yeah, he was like in his early 20s, I would say. But okay. I mean, I thought nine minutes on this move. And then he should play, you know, Coin Suchet, Slane Fiat, you know, 
He should play for initiative. Right. I can't believe he would. He he took this without even thinking, and it's forty moves in two hours. What a dummy! Yeah, there there are many players. Usually, young boys are like this, mm -hmm. impulsive kind of like, like let me show you my guns. Yeah. Mm. I wanted to conclude to that one with um. I think because I I'm trying to remember what I have as um my files for black. As my notes for black, and I think you said takes takes bishop g5, mm -hmm. so h6 first because I never know if it's h6 or c5. h6 first no, is more common, and you can play That's yeah. You, bishop h4 is the more more aggressive move. Yeah, I have this. One. Then you I take on even, c5. I don't even have yeah. anything on bishop takes, and yeah. then oh, you take. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of grandmaster games. You have to know a lot of theory. Yeah. You, you can't you can't forget it. Forgetting it's bad. Also, you don't have to say you can play E3 if you're a baby like me. But DC is what all the good players play. Right. So it's almost like there is so much theory here that's almost like not for me. Because I, like, unless I have to be prepared, preparing for three hours before the game. But if I, if someone caught me off guard, right. I definitely need a move which is... Yeah, this is, this is what I play with white. Just the boring way. Oh, you play, yeah. And this is in the chessable course. You can see what I give. This is, there's more. Yeah. And you can look at games in this position. Uh, you know, like you can just look at other ga like games like from chess space or whatever. There's a lot of games in this position. Nice. And, um, but if they go, well, yeah, it's another discussion, I guess. I've played Bishop H4, but that's because I was in the mood to do it when I was younger. Now I'm never in the is mood there, to do it. Yeah. Is there a way here for black not to enter main lines, but try to do something? But I guess you're not. Then exactly you're just going to play a QGD where you're better because the bishop's on B4. A lot of times they just go back. So I play a lot of low-rated players online, and we get position like this. I'll play knight F3 or knight E2. Doesn't matter, and then they'll just go back, and I'm I'm a tempo up in a QGD. Oh. So it's just the queen's gambit declined, but they played bishop b4, bishop b7. Wait, did you just play? I thought in the structure the best was to put the knight to. Yeah, you can play. You can so play knight e2. F3, e4. Yeah, that's typically what they're playing now. Yeah. But this is this is already better for white because the bishop doesn't belong on b4; it belongs on d6 here. Yeah. yeah, bishop takes f6 is is much saner. Bishop h4 is crazy, but if if they don't, you know, a lot of people won't play the right way for black here. They'll just play c6, knight d7, castles, and then white's better. Because then bishop b4 doesn't make any sense. Then the bishop should be here. Uh, can you repeat that again? A lot of players? Yeah, they won't play the main lines like h6 and then c c5. This is the people who are booked up. People who aren't booked yeah. up, you know, if you're playing somebody like 2,000 to 2,300, they might just play C6, Knight D7, Castles. And those positions are just better for white. You just get QGD okay. positions where the bishop's misplaced, and usually they lose a the tempo. Let me try to remember what I remember. So I think it was before it was C5. Mm -hmm. You take Castle, E3. Knight, bishop e6, you do something, like, I don't know what you do. Bishop d3, or bishop e2. Well, knight f3 knight. or bishop d3. Let's bishop play knight, knight f3. Knight d7. Yeah. yeah. Bishop d3. And I think it's somewhere, like, maybe rook c8. Short castle, and somewhere is g5. And, like, and you take with something. Maybe... Yeah, this is a position I would like to have white in. I th so this is where like I have a stop in my kind of mm -hmm. like in the, in the in my notes, but I assume it's only the beginning, right? Yeah, it's a slight advantage for white, but it's the kind of position I like for white. But it's here, like playing it for black. My my, I guess my question is like you need to like this is like where you should start from, right? Yeah, you no need way. to play super aggressive with black. 
So you're going to play knight e4 as soon as you can and put pressure on c3. Because in the long run, your position's worse. You play g5, have isolated pawn, but you have a lot of activity. You're attacking c3 a lot. I mean, you can always go deeper. You can always be a Shankland, but at least you have more talent than Shankland. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's all I say that's I say that's everybody. Oh. Shankland lost today, so I was very happy. I was rude against him in Nakamura. Whoa! And then, I see some serious uh, conflict over there. The pro the problem with rooting against Nakamura is it never goes well for me. Rooting against oh. Shankland, that's that's keeping me good. That's good. That keeps me happy. You're a big fan of Sam, big Sam. Big fan. I am a big fan of Sam Sevian. Okay. I root for him. Nice. So my my student told me, I don't know if he's right, that Nakamura is playing Fabiano tomorrow. Oh really? I can't prove it, but that's what he told me. So it's it's good versus evil. That's my favorite pairing. Problem is evil usually beats good. That's why you lost to Nate. Uh, oh, what did you say? Trouble is? No, evil. Evil? It's good versus oh. evil when Nakamura plays, plays Fabi. Good versus evil. That's why I lost to Nate. Exactly. Okay, because e e evil is good. Evil is always beating good. It's not the movies, it's real life. So you agree with me that Nate is evil, I'm glad. Well, I, I don't, but it was a good joke. Okay, nice. Uh, yes, my chat says it's true. Fabi does play that he covered tomorrow. Okay, cool. My chat knows nothing. Mm. Although I think you have a big chat and my chat has like five people. No, 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 mine has 10. But um, um, Let's see, you have 481 and I have 171, so you win. It's okay. You know that they say whenever you go to the bathroom, you don't compare. Yeah? Is that what they say? Yes, that's what they say. So we won't compare. It doesn't sound like something women should say, but okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how long do you continue to stream today for? Um, when, when we're done, I'm done. Okay. Let me see if I can, like, obviously... Hmm, I'm looking still from... Black's perspective. Um, knight f6, c4. Okay, do you, like, you said, I think you said that you can play something else on Red Sea. Yeah, you can you play anything. Like you can play any first quick. move you want. Like, okay, so my first question, yeah. What, what do you play against e4 when you're black? I mean, Seriously, is that a question? It's a Karo Khan baby. It's one of the Karo Khan? Okay. Well, then you probably shouldn't play C5 on move one. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, knight F6. That's kind of my favorite for white. Yeah, knight F6. Knight F6 is good. And G3, G6? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this is what I, I lost, like, uh, my last tournament. I lost here the game with the white when they literally copied everything I did. Mm-hmm. And then castled, castled. And I was like, I thought Ben Feingold said copying copycat isn't good. And then they just like did everything the same, kind of. But then I lost. And I looked it up. I tried looking it up. And I think D3 was a mistake. I think I, I have to take the center, maybe C4. I'm going to tell you something you don't want to hear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When you lose a game... It doesn't mean it's because of the opening. Right. You, you it, said it already it's, before. It's, it's, like it's, it's, easy, it's easy to blame the opening, but that's not why you're losing these games. Correct. But I did not know what's in the opening, that being said. Yeah, as long as you play good middle game. Play the middle game like Carlson. Then it doesn't matter how you play the opening. Right, because he can start the game with 1H4. Mm -hmm. In fact, he, he, prob he, he probably has. So this is this is okay, you say. This is okay. You're asking me. Yeah, this is okay. <laughs> you you said you lost with it with, as white, so I guess it's okay for black. <laughs> I mean, if if I were like okay, let me precise. 
I feel unsatisfied with d5 and bishop g4. Is there something else that you think I should look into that could? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're more? playing white with with this, then you can definitely play black. It's the same position. Yeah, with black. Do you think like okay? But actually, why am I like I, I'm gonna Nate? Why am I asking you if Nate can can tell me the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but also, if you're playing knight f3 a lot, there could be one or two lines you don't like to face, and you can play those with black. Correct. So, I mean, it's not the so opening's fault. You just you get to play chess at some point. So, you know, if you're trading when you shouldn't be trading and you're not maintaining tension and you're not finding the right ideas, the opening doesn't matter. You got to play good chess in the middle game. That's true. I mean, obviously, this is fine for black, as, as you know, since you lost with white. So, <laughs> it's obviously fine for black. Yes. I, I had a student about 30 years ago, he was rated 1975. And he always played the Grunfeld. And his opponent played knight f3. This guy was older than me. This guy was in his 50s. And I was in my 20s. And he said, what do I do here with black? And I'm like, it's move two. He says, yeah, but I played the Grunfeld. Now I can't play the Grunfeld. He, he said, I played this. Is that okay or is that bad? This is a guy who's 1975 and he's in his 50s. And he's like, is that bad or that's okay? <laughs> I'm the great openings expert. I should have said, this is terrible, loses by force. How could you play such a move? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I play the Grunfeld. If they play G3, I resign because I can't play the Grunfeld. Like, what? <laughs> that, that was what he was insinuating. You can't play E4 against me. I play the Grunfeld. Yeah, don't worry about the opening so much. Just be confident when you're playing. Okay. Always be super confident. Yeah. It's like I'm always right, except when I'm, when I'm not. When Link's I'm just inclusive, conclusive for the sub. What time, what day next week is good? Would we do the same days? Did you, next Friday, I'm heading off to European Chess Championship, European Team Chess Championship. So mm -hmm. I'll be streaming pretty much every day until then. And whenever you can, I'd be down because I really need to... to yeah, we can do, we can do Tuesday and Wednesday. Us. Why don't we do Tuesday and Wednesday? Yes, sounds good. Same time? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Feinstein. Oh, sorry, Feingold. No, Feinstein's right. Feinstein, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's what Peter calls me. Right. Yeah. Who? Peter, the guy who runs the Charlotte Chess Center. Oh. Peter oh. Giannatos. Or as oh. I call him, Peter Giant Anus. <laughs> right. Now you know I've why I'm Feinstein. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, Atuta okay. Lur. Tschüss. Yes, thank you so much. Are, are you continuing to stream? Should I no, hear, no, uh, I'm not going to stream anymore. I'm done streaming. Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much. Tell uh, Miss Karen that um, I'm sending her my best greetings so that she recovers well. And I hope that you will not get sick tomorrow because the chances are very high no she'll be good tomorrow and then you you have to remember there we're changing the clock so you're going to be like at midnight yes i, I remember that okay I remember yeah we're that. changing tomorrow if, night if you if you feel like you want to start early i would be happy we can we can start up. earlier because i'll do two streams i have to stream at 8 30 so we can start earlier if that's better for you it's always better always better yeah okay so let's do like tell me your time and then i'll figure out my time I mean, I am, these days I can ad adopt any, so whatever works for you, just er the earlier the better, but it doesn't have to be too early. Let's see, Tuesday I have a lesson at five, I think. So we could do it two o'clock my time, which, okay. which is eight o'clock eight o'clock your time in the evening. Is, yeah. is that too early for you or that's okay? Yeah. That's good, eight o'clock your time? Yes. 
Okay, so Tuesday, 8 p.m. your time. Yes. Let's see, wait, who's texting me? No, those Dina streams are great. Okay, cool. Who said that? Uh, one of my mods. Oh, nice. Well, thank you, mods. Mm -hmm. And uh, stay tuned for next Tuesday. Yep. Okay, have a good rest of your stream. Thank you so much for the best rest and stress of my stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, bye, Dina. Bye-bye, Ben. Say hi to Karen. Okay.